Decay, or decomposition, is the breakdown of organic material by organisms called decomposers. Decomposers are microorganisms, bacteria and fungi, which break down dead tissue or waste using enzymes in order to release the food molecules they contain. The decomposers will use some of the molecules as food, and the rest are released into the environment. There are several factors that affect the rate of decay, and one is temperature. One reason that temperature affects the rate of decay is the fact that enzymes act optimally in warm conditions. You can write a hypothesis for this based on your everyday knowledge. You know that food kept in the fridge decays slower than food kept in a warm kitchen. Therefore, we can hypothesize that the higher temperature that the food is stored at, the faster the rate of decay. Now you need to design an investigation to test this. One method could be to use the decay of milk. When milk decays, decomposers release enzymes that change the lactose in milk into lactic acid. This is why gone-off milk curdles. It is also the basis of yoghurt making. The problem in carrying out an investigation into decay in the classroom is that this is a long process. Think how long a bottle of milk will take to curdle if left in a warm kitchen. The length of time needed makes it difficult to collect valid data, particularly if you are trying to complete the experiment in one science lesson. To overcome this, you can model decay using an enzyme rather than the actual decomposers themselves. This model gives similar data, but can be carried out during one science lesson. In this investigation, we will be looking at how temperature affects the rate of decay of milk using the enzyme lipase. An indicator called Cresol Red is used to show when decay happens. This indicator is purple in alkaline solutions and then turns yellow when the pH drops below 8.3. The indicator will change colour because the lipase is catalyzing the breakdown of the lipids in the milk to release fatty acids. You will use full fat milk in a boiling tube and make it alkaline by adding sodium carbonate to it. Sodium carbonate is an irritant, so eye protection needs to be worn. Add a few drops of Cresol Red so the mixture turns purple. Meanwhile, make a water bath using hot water from a kettle. Measure the temperature of the water bath. Place the boiling tube into the hot water and use a thermometer to monitor its temperature. Example temperatures could be 5, 10, 20, 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. When the contents of the boiling tube reach the same temperature as the water bath, add lipase to the milk and start a timer. Time how long it takes for the indicator in the milk to turn yellow. Repeat another two times, making sure you record your results in a suitable table and calculate a mean. Repeat this method using a water bath at a range of different temperatures, aiming for at least five different ones. You can use ice to make water baths for temperatures lower than room temperature. The data should be shown as a line graph, with temperature in degrees Celsius on the x-axis and the mean time for the pH to fall below 8.3 on the y-axis. When evaluating this method, you should mention the fact that this is a model for decay. It could be improved by using decomposer organisms rather than lipase. However, this would require the milk to be left for several hours at the different temperatures. Most students wouldn't want to stay overnight at school watching a test tube of milk change colour, so the method has been modified because of this. Using an electrical water bath would be better than a beaker of hot water. This is because the temperature of the hot water will decrease, but it will stay the same in an electrical water bath that is controlled by a thermostat.